Hey everyone, Mike from Just Watch back with another Just Watch review. Going outside of the box today in that we are going to look at our first digital watch. My friend Mimo at Mimo's Jewelry reached out to me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, you know, I'm going to start carrying these Casio G-Shocks and if you'd like to wear one around for a bit, check one out for a review, I'd love to send you one. And I said, heck yeah, I'll check one out. You know, I think there's a time and a place for digital watches. You know, there's definitely times where you don't really want to abuse your mechanical watch or a nice mechanical watch and we'll do a quick time check. This is the Tudor 79230N Black Bay Black with the in-house movement. We'll get into this one at a video review down the road. Basically, I haven't taken this off in two weeks since I got it, so that kind of tells you a little bit about my thoughts on this watch here. But like I said, I think there is a time and a place for a good, sturdy, robust digital watch, and the G-Shock line definitely fits the bill. It's also a classic. It's one of those watches that everybody should have in the collection. So stay tuned to the end of the video, too. I'm going to give you guys a discount code and let you know some more information about how you can score a deal on Casio G-Shock at MimosJewelry.com. So let's switch camera views and we will get into this G-Shock. Everyone, thanks for tuning in again. Here's the G-Shock. All right, everyone, so let's run through this Casio G-Shock. I'll try not to go for too long on this, but when you purchase it, this is what you're getting in this nice glossy box with the G-Shock logo on top, which actually reminds me a lot of Specialized Bicycles logo, if you guys are any of you guys are cyclists and are familiar with that, there's a little bit of similarity there, definitely with the colors. And then just a little bit of product info on the back, including recycle. And please do recycle if you're not giving the box. I'm a big advocate for recycling, so just wanted to get that in. Within the box, you're getting the hang tag, which would normally be attached to the watch. U.S. suggested retail of $250. You also get, I'm going to skip the book for now, you get this international warranty card, which is pretty much like a credit card type of thing. And then you get this quite thick book, which is written in a bunch of different languages. And it's actually very instructive as to all the different things that this watch does. And definitely, you know, sit down with the watch and spend 10 or 20 minutes with it, just learning all the ins and outs because it does come in very handy. And there's a lot of stuff that this watch does that you're gonna wanna know about. So within, that nice glossy box, you get another glossy box. <laughs> this one's made out of metal though, some sort of tin or aluminum. And the nice embossed treatment on the top with your Casio G-Shock since 1983. And then it does have that nice little logo hit there on one side. In this, you have lots of foam padding, so the watch is very secure. It is, it does come from the factory wrapped in plastic. I have actually I shot the first take and the sound of my removing the watch from the plastic was so awful that I, I took it off and reshot it. So I'm sparing you guys, so you're welcome. And there's the watch. So let's take a look at this thing. Here we go. Get a close up on that dial. So it's quite the burly construction on this. Very, very much, you know, kind of you know, military, very robust looking, uh, very masculine presence to it. They do make a baby G-Shock too for uh, people with smaller wrists, or uh, I know that they're very popular with some women. Uh, so that's another option too. This one is, it's a big boy, I'm gonna guess. I did not measure this out, so if somebody knows the measurements and wants to include them below in the comments, please do. But I'm guessing it's around 48 or 50 from edge to edge here going across, you know, you're getting a little bit extra with these bars, these four bars, but even the actual bezel itself, I'm guessing it's around 47. Here, I'll show you a quick comparison to, actually here, I'll do a wrist comparison. So here is the 41 millimeter Tudor Black Bay. I'll pop that off real quick. And here, is the G-Shock. Now I'm gonna bother strapping that on just to save time, but we'll give you an idea. Actually, maybe I will, just so I can move away without knocking things over. So there's the G-Shock in comparison. So you can see, it's 
it's chunky, but I mean, it's doable. I have a seven inch wrist and it's not overwhelming my wrist by any means. It's quite thick. It's definitely not going to, it's going to hang a lot of cost if you're trying to wear it with a shirt cuff. You know, it's not a watch you're going to wear with a, a dress shirt by any means, but it's not meant for that. You know, this is a watch that's kind of purpose built for athletic or, you know, if you're working construction or, you know, first responders or military, you know, that's kind of your target market for this watch or just people that want that really burly and destructible watch. But that guy's typically not going to be walking around in a, you know, a French cuff dress shirt <laughs> with a tight cuff. They're going to be in something more like the Black Bay here or even smaller, maybe a date just or a day date or something along that line. So let's take a quick run through the dial and then the features on this bad boy. So our dial is pretty neat. It's got a lot of layers to it. And, you know, the black gray motif, very much reminiscent of, like I want to say, like a stealth fighter or something like that. And very much like a 3D machine type look, especially with the index markers and the chapter ring and then the bezel. So you do have the 12 o'clock. You have a digital subdial at 2 and at 4. And then at 6, this tells you which mode you're in. So that's a mode indicator with that little hit of color, the little bit of gray, yellow, and red. And then at the 9 o'clock, you have your secondary clock, which is your world clock. And it's a whole bunch of different time zones you can set in. It's 31 time zones, 48 cities, plus UTC. Um, it has a city code display, which I'll show you in a second. And then, so you have your, your um, bezel has your compass indicating marks. You can see there you also have where it's telling you what the button is, which button is which. So you got light, search, mode, and adjust. And then over here, this big boy is your compass button. So let me show you actually the subdial first, which is controlled by the mode button. And the buttons are A, B, C, D, and E. So D button controls your subdial there. So you can see that clicks us over to world time. And I'm currently set for Athens, Greece. It looks like it is 5 a.m. in Athens, Greece. And stopwatch. So that puts in the stopwatch mode. The E button is what starts and stops your stopwatch. It measures in a tenth of a second. Or actually a hundredth of a second, I'm sorry. And then your A button resets it. And then we go to timer. So this is currently set for a 10 minute countdown. And I'm not going to start that just because I don't feel like messing with it. Alarm, you can set up to five alarms per day. And it's going to skip compass because compass is controlled over here. It's going to go back to current time. One other cool feature with this watch too, if you're setting something or using one of the dates or something and you want to get the handset out of the way, like the handset is obscuring what you want to see, you can press the B and the D button together and it'll move the hands all the way. Check this out. So it puts them right into a position where they're not blocking anything off. So it gives you a nice look at the Casio signing there. Let me zoom in a little bit on there. So there's your Casio signing at the 12 o'clock, the WR20 bar, and then give you a better look at those subdials and all that good stuff. And also those kind of really cool 3D looking index markers and a little bit of step going on there on that inner ring that the index markers go down to. So really kind of a cool looking piece. I'll give you a look at the rest of the watch too. So you got your side, you see how thick that is. I'm guessing that's 17 or 18 millimeters thick at least. And there's your control buttons, including your compass control. And of course the strap itself, which is a silicone strap, very common type of silicone strap with your stretch, a little bit, a little bit stiff on the stiff side, but I think it will break in pretty nicely. And the two pin. And they are connected, the straps are connected with threaded Allen screw or hex screw, whatever you prefer, hardware. So it's not a push pin like a typical watch. And then there is your other side. Like I said, it's very much a robust mechanical looking watch. And of course, the stainless here, I'll open this back up again so you can get a better look at the case back. So there is your G-Shock case back, your signed case back, stainless with just the four screws. This has a two year battery life on the watch. So it's not super long like some digital watches. And I think it probably only a two year because it does use 
a lot of power with all of these different features like your countdown and your moving your hands out of the way and what have you. I forgot to show you too. So when you move the hands out of the way, that's how they scoot over. And when you press them again, it goes right back to resuming the normal time. It's a pretty cool feature. So A button, adjust. B button is your light, which I will show you in a second. We'll turn off the lights and do that. Uh, you have your search button down here, which also gives us our temperature feature. So we can see temperature we're reading in Fahrenheit right now, and we're at 76 degrees. We're getting a little bit warm in here from the lights. And then mode always resets us back to where we started. So that's a pretty simple way of just some of what the buttons do. There's a lot more that we can dig into, but I just don't want to go into that far, that deep of minutia. Let me show you the compass on this too. It's pretty cool. So basically, let's say we're heading, you know, direct directly in the direction of the 12 o'clock. So we're going this way and we want to know which direction that is, what the bearing is. We press our compass button and watch the second hand. So the second hand is pointing north. And we can actually calibrate that so it points to magnetic north too. So we can do either or. So right now, the 12 o'clock, the direction we're heading in the 12 o'clock, you can see east southeast right there. It's actually east, but what happens is when I tip up the watch, it changes the reading, as you can see by what it's doing to the to the indication of magnetic north. But basically I'm facing due east with this 12 o'clock. So if we bring it around a little bit, so you can see it. Yeah, southwest now. So it's fun to play with. It's um it's fun to watch that second hand swing around to true north and also check out different directions. This will also remember bearings and do all kinds of other cool compass type features. So pretty neat. And we hit mode and we go right back to exactly the same time it was. So it remembers what time it is. So I think that's kind of a cool feature in its own right. So there is a quick look at your Casio G-Shock watch, really cool watch. If you want to score one of these, if you want to add one of these to collection, I think it's definitely a worthy piece to have in your collection. Very useful for lots of things, whether you're out doing yard work, you know, digging ditches for a living, doing construction for a living, or if you're a first responder or in the military, I think that they definitely are a purpose-built watch and they're gonna suit you well. And then, you know, when you come home at night, you want to put on a nicer watch, it'll be in great shape and it'll be ready to go. If you do want to score one of these, do head over to mimosjewelry.com. I'll put the link in the description below. You can use the code MIKE20 when you, when you check out and that gets you 20% off any in-stock Casio G-Shock. If he doesn't, if Mimo does not have the watch that you're looking for, so you go to Casio.com and you see a G-Shock that Mimo does not have, shoot him an email using the contact form on the website. He will order for that for you and he will still apply that 20% off discount. So really cool. Also, if you're looking for a Seiko, we're continuing with the 35% discount using the code Mike35. That applies only to in-stock Seiko watches. So check out what Mimo has in stock for Seiko watches. I know he's got some turtles and I think some samurais left and at 35% off, he could score an awesome deal and you're getting them from a US authorized, authorized dealer. So no gray market issues there. You're gonna get your full warranty and all the benefits that comes along with that. So everyone, thanks for checking in with us on this quick look at the Casio G-Shock and we will be back soon with the next video, probably We'll be taking a look at this black bay steel. Oh, you know what I actually just remembered? We forgot to do the loom shot. So let's do that real quick too. So I'm gonna pop off the lights here and we'll do the loom. So there is your standard loom. Just This is just what is picked up from the studio lights here as we were recording. So you can see it's a pretty vigorous loom. Definitely no issues seeing it. And I haven't tested durability on this yet, but I'm gonna guess it's you know up there with what Seiko is using. It looks actually just like the same loom. It actually reacts just like Seiko loom too. Like I've worn it outside a few times and coming into the house and you know, you just get to a little bit of shade and it's instantly popping. So just to give you an idea, there is your Tudor loom. So just to give you a comparison. And then 
here is your light. Boom. So it really lights up. It's, it's quite bright. Definitely something that you could use, you know, if you're coming home in the dark and you want to locate that keyhole or, you know, something along that lines. It's definitely bright enough to do that for you too. So really handy, useful feature. So that is your full run through on the Casio G-Shock. We'll come back with an update on this after a bit more wear and tear is put on it. So everyone, thanks again for tuning into this episode and we will be back soon. Please do also remember to give us a subscription if you like this content and hit that like button and also let us know how we're doing, give us some comments, et cetera, et cetera. All right, everyone, thanks, bye-bye.